Well, this time of year, it's not uncommon for us to come in and pull up some of our older summertime vegetables like tomatoes, for example. And to my surprise, we found something that is really not a very good sign at all. This is a tomato again, uh, the big rainbow variety that we grew as an heirloom. And what we noticed are these unusual growths on the tomato root system. And what that indicates, and we sent it off to have it confirmed, it's root, not nematodes. And again, that's not a good sign for us here in our gardens. Now this particular plant was over in the bed adjacent to me. And the symptomology for root knot nematodes are these unusually huge growth on the root system. Now the way the root system should normally look is more like this with fibrous roots coming off of them which actually take up the nutrients. This one has the nodules forming too but it's not as severe as the one over here which you see hardly any root hairs and again these extremely large growths. And what the root knot nematode is, it's really described basically as a microscopic worm that penetrates in the root system. It lives in the soil. It actually prefers sandier type soils versus heavy clays. But because we've been working them up some, we may have brought some in from another source. They then finish their life cycle in the root system, maybe feed on them a little bit and cause the malformation of the root system. So you can imagine that eventually, depending on the type of plant, the root system isn't going to be able to support the plant. Now probably in this case we may have had a variety that was a little bit tolerant to nematodes and remember on tomatoes by the name of the plant you can find VFN. N stands for nematode tolerant or resistance because our plant really had a lot of good foliage on it. It was still producing. The only symptoms that we see on it are from spider mites and maybe a little bit of disease problems, but it didn't go down and it wasn't stunted like we would normally see with nematode damage. Now the question is, what are we going to do about it? Well, first of all, this particular plant, we will still go ahead and try to compost the top. The root system, if we shred it up and compost it, you need to make sure that you get extremely hot temperatures to kill out the nematodes. Otherwise, just haul it off to the landfill or burn it. Don't even try to compost it if you're not sure of the temperatures you're getting. So we'll dispose of it. The next thing is the more organic matter that you can add to a particular soil will help reduce the symptomology or the, not necessarily the symptoms, but the nematodes themselves. The other thing that we could do is remember plant French type marigolds in this bed next season, rotate it out and try to reduce the population of nematodes but only using French marigolds. Just planting them in amongst the tomatoes won't do any good. We have to rotate it out. We'll also start having to check for nematode resistant varieties on anything that we plant in here to try to get some tolerance. And then under the most harsh circumstances, you can use um, the soil solarization. About a year ago, we tried to show you that segment and visited with you on it just recently this year where you're using clear plastic trying to catch the hot temperatures of the summer with moisture to heat the soil up to sterilize it. Now again, that's only going to be active in the first few inches of soil and it won't reduce the population 100%. So as a last resort, if you choose to use, say, a soil sterilant, a chemical, there's some changes that you need to know about. Now Vapam, which is a chemical that's been sold over the shelf to home gardeners for years, has recently been pulled off the shelf and caused uh, some changes with the labeling. It's now a restricted use pesticide, which means the common homeowner without a restricted use license cannot apply it. We would have to go and hire somebody to apply Vapam now. And if you go to your garden centers, you'll probably see it's been pulled off the shelf during this restricting or re uh, labeling of the product. So there are other soil sterilants, but again, now we're going to have to hire somebody to come in and do them, or if you have a restricted license, you can apply them. So there are several things we can do, but the most important thing is just common sense. For example, now that we've been tilling and, and working with the shovel, if I take the shovel to another location and put it in this little bit of soil on the shovel, I can carry the nematodes and infect other beds. So after every time we use any tool in the soil, tiller or shovel, we're going to have to wash them off and sterilize them, preferably with like a bleach solution. 
That also means walking across this bed and carrying soil to another area. We can contaminate other beds, dragging a water hose across it. So there's a lot of implications with this problem. Again, it's probably something we've brought in from plant material or soil from another usage. So we've got to be very careful now and try a combination of things, hoping that we won't have to use the chemicals. So I would encourage you at the end of this summer, especially this fall, while you're pulling up plant material, look and see if you notice any abnormal roots like this. Now your peas and beans, remember, are going to have nodules that are nitrogen fixing and they're more round in shape versus abnormal growth. And look and see if you might be having any nematode problems in your soil. Well, that's all the time we have today. We want to encourage you to come back and join us again next weekend here on Oklahoma Gardening.